Hallelujah. Let's take your seat. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.
the devil has been teaching people since. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And God began to wonder again. So, okay. After very many years, God decided to pull Abraham. Because he wanted to make out from Abraham a country. You know, God was disappointed. Because if you read the book of Genesis, before chapter 6, man has started killing one another. Before they could get to chapter 10, the evil was taking over the place. Why? Because we, they allowed the devil to come in and begin to deceive them again. Now, if Cain, mother ever, who taught Cain how to kill? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible said that this devil was a murderer from the beginning. So, who thought Cain that he could kill Abel? He didn't know it from anywhere. He has never seen it. He has never watched it. Nothing. Who brought that pain in his senses? It was the devil. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A man began to sow evil seeds. When they sow this seed, they began to go far away from God. Because the Bible said in the same book of Genesis that a time came when, when Cain killed Abel, God said, I know. He said, where is your brother? He said, don't, don't ask me. Am I a keeper of my brother? He said, I know what you did. You killed your brother. And his blood has been crying out from the earth to me. From today you are cursed. He said, I'm going to cause the ground. Sorry, he didn't cause it. He said, the ground was cursed. And he went from his presence. He said, but people will kill me. The Bible says he gave him a mark. Not a physical mark. But, you know, when somebody, that somebody, somebody might be cursed, that does not prevent him. I always tell people that God did not say, there shall be no money for the wicked. So when you begin to judge your blessings according to how much money in your pocket, then you will be making mistakes. The Bible said, there is no peace, peace for the wicked. Not money, no houses, no children. He said, there is no peace for the wicked. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you begin to judge yourself according to how much money that is in your pocket, then you are sowing an evil seed to your mind. You are destroying yourself. Because God can still operate without money. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what am I saying? To sow evil seeds. And Cain began to multiply. Before he could get to the fourth generation, he got love. He got another man who killed another man. So that evil seed continued to multiply. And God said that. My spirit can no longer continue with man because man's thought everything was evil. The minds were full 
of evil. Continually. It's not a process that, okay, today we think of our evil tomorrow. He said the heart of man is desperately wicked. And who can know it? Who can know it? The heart of man. So the thing that propels man as life sustainer or life giver. I know God is life giver, but if your heart stops, then you'll be dead. That same heart that propels you to move and do things is constantly evil. You, see, it's, you know when somebody is desperate, desperately wicked, just he's looking for some wickedness to that is the only thing. He's so desperate that he must do some wicked, he must do some damage. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, God began to look around and pick up another man called Abraham and said, I'm going to show Abraham as a seed of righteousness and faith. So that this man could multiply people of his type that will show the devil, teach the devil what? Sense. Teach him lessons. That is the only reason why you are called to tell the devil where he belongs. Remember we read yesterday in the book of Colossians chapter 3 that God's intention is for you to teach the heavenly authorities the heavenly administrators, the manifold wisdom of God. It's not for you to feel it. You know, you know sometimes God speaks to me, like if I'm watching this house of bread and the top officials, the government. You see how they package themselves? They look so good. And they know when they come when they come for the meeting, they know exactly what they want. They are demanding for their council, ward, community, whatever, which which whatever city or whatever they are representing, they know their need. Even if they are lying, but they have it. In. They know exactly what they are expecting from the government. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And people of that community, they have faith in that man. So whatever, if the community fails, if the government does not reach those communities, they know who to go to. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As a seed in your community, in your family, to represent families, communities, and countries. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
But don't believe that you can war. You can, you can fight. You can speak to situation. That's why I was telling us yesterday that we need to know the time. The timing. There is a time to talk to God. Yeah. And there is a time to talk to situation. There was a time Moses, he was leading the people of Israelites. And God was speaking to him. And after a while, when he came in the midst of the Red Sea, he came before the Red Sea and the Egyptians were coming. He started calling on God again. And God said, listen, what is in your hand? Speak to the sea. Talk to that sea, don't talk to me again. You talk to that sea. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a time when God wants you to that's why I said when you meet God, God, if God wants to do a very battle for you, He would have killed it. He wouldn't have known the devil. He allowed the devil so that you can have the same attribute like God. Because he created you in his own image. He wants you to be, the Bible said, he is the Lord of hosts. So he wants you to be one of the hosts. Praise the Lord. That learns how to do what? Fight. He said, he lives, he allows the devil to trouble you. To the point that you will start. Yes. Oh, wow. yes. That you will change your mind and start fighting. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, when we were younger, there's this particular boy, you know, he, anytime I come out from my, I don't, he will stay in their own apartment. I'll be looking around. Once I come, my mother will always tell me to go go to the market and buy something. And as soon as I step out, he will follow me to a point where no <laughs> nobody will defend me. He said, so you have been insulting me. I said, when? <laughs> Sometimes I promise him something to make sure he will go. Then after one day, I was coming back from if I we were just coming back from church. The same boy followed. I didn't know that he came around that street. I was waiting. He knows where I follow, you know, to go home. So while we were just going home, I was going with my siblings. We were from the oldest. I was going with them, and the same boy came again. I said, you think you can insult me and go for it? I said, when? He said, when I finish beating you today, you will know. <laughs> and I don't know where this, because there's nobody to defend me. I mean, I've been breaking him. He will beat me, I will just go. That day, it was fight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I was ready to that because they saw he said that okay, kill just kill me. Every I was every time I've been thinking about this boy, well, how can I go free from this boy? That day we fought. Praise the Lord. We fought and we roll inside the gutter and we come out again. And because God decided to set me free. There's this woman who was selling something. He said, I saw when this boy was coming. She, he didn't do anything. She was screaming. He never knew. Okay, so you are, you are stubborn. God was there telling the boy, leave him alone. It's okay. He went inside. She went inside her house and called his boy. And said, oh, be calm. Just make sure you beat this boy properly for me. 
and the hope will descend on him. Plus, plus the one I finished, I didn't do it properly. Open and grab him and put him down. After Peter, he said, You will sit here until I'm sure that they say, Say, where did you live? I told him, It's okay, I know where you must have got him home. He's not living here. He finished beating him and keep him for an arrest for some minutes so that I can get home. <laughs> and that was it. Since that day, we became friends. <laughs> no more fighting. See, he didn't know I was this strong. Sometimes it's because situation has not dragged you to a point when you begin to blow the devil. So that situation will keep on pressing you to the wall. Until there's no other place to go. Now, what am I saying? You, God called you to do what? So there's no fight. Good one. So you stop, stop crying. Stop crying because God has sold you as a seed. And you must germinate. Produce hundreds, thousands of fruit and more seeds. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Until you understand how, what, why God called you. God did not call you to always feel good. No. You are soldiers in Afghanistan. You they feel good all the time. If you begin to feel good all the time, they will call you to order. When you begin to hear God shot, you package yourself properly again and get ready to. That's why the problem, you, you cannot say, I, I prayed last year. This year, I'm not going to pray. I was a very good Christian. Imagine, we've been fasting for four, you know what, 40 days. Christianity is not 40 days Christianity. Mm -hmm. Neither is it one year. No, seven years. I have, I have tried so much. So, devil, I give up. The moment you surrender, the Bible said, he is a man that never allows his prisoners to do what? To go. He's so wicked that he won't say, let me love this man for 35 years and let him go. Until you learn your lesson. Because you don't want to teach him lesson you will continue to teach you lesson. Mm -hmm. But the intentions of God is for you to tell the devil. He said, to teach the authorities of the heavenlies, the manifold wisdom of God. Because the devil has no sense. You need to teach him. You don't expect him to have sense. Because they kick him from very high, you know where he fell from? And when he landed on the ground, the Bible says he has several heads. His head pressed to the point that you know when something splash, like he just on the ground, and he have what seven heads. How do you expect a man with seven heads to have sense? <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to have one head. You begin to knock off all the heads. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 All the things I'm going to tell you now.
corner is for you to get ready to fight. Amen? 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 Amen. You have done this training a lot. You can't continue training. When you finish training, you come out and do what? Fight. Fight. Stop. Stop being at ease in Zion. Because the devil will not allow you. Even, you know, even if you beg the devil, you know, begging him, then please. Everything created in 
including the animals. The animals sometimes you see them in the train pursuing you. They are crying, I'm not the one. I'm not pursuing you. The devil decided to use me to pursue. So they are waiting for the sons of God to teach them lesson that you don't need to pursue human beings in the dream. So if the devil wants to come out, let him come out and say it's the devil. You don't need to manipulate things. The trees in your house, they are not very good food because they are crying. Something is holding them bound. The people in your house, they are crying. The atmosphere, everything is crying because that is not how God created them. So they decided to be waiting for the manifestation, the, the coming out of the souls of God. Those who know their God to set them free. You are in a place where you don't want to stay. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are in a job and you know that this job is not the plan of God for me. How do you come out? You teach that job a lesson. I'm not created to be here. You begin to speak, you know, you speak mysteries until everything will line up again. That's how to do it. You began to pray. You began to teach that situation a lesson. I am not called. God did not call me to give me cancer. Diabetes. That's not why God created me. So diabetes, I'm going to teach you where to go. Not in this one. You begin to pray. You begin to pray. You begin to pray. You begin to speak mysteries. You begin to, until you confuse that diabetes. Show him the diabetes that you are more educated. That what? Diabetes. Let it run out of your body. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, how do we sow this seed so that we can get results? Everybody say faith. faith. Everybody say faith. faith. I cannot sow without faith. For anything that is gotten out of faith is what? Is a sin. Faith. I want you to open your Bible. Hebrews chapter 11. If you're there, share. If you're not there, say, wait for me. Wait for me. If you're there, say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I saw the read from this one.
Faith does not apply to your five senses. Six, I don't know. Is it six or five now? Say five. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, things change every day. So it might be six now or every seven. But I know five. Five senses. He does not apply to sense. So, when God is ready, or when a man is ready to follow God, he will lose his sense. You know, people ask him, you lost your man. Yes. Yes. So when you come to the church and sit down, we are people that have lost our mind. We don't have sense. And the world will tell you that. Because what we are doing does not happen. Imagine if somebody is sick and you lay her. When somebody is sick, what is the necess what is necessary thing to do? Rush in to the hospital. I want to put in the hospital. You have punches and packets of tablets, demonic, whatever, put together chemicals, they do, and then boom into your mouth. And the headache will stop. And after a while, the stomach will start getting big. They say, oh, it's post medication. You are taking too much, so we want to reduce it now. They cut off one part of your belly. Mm -hmm. that, that's how the devil, that, that's it. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You have too much headache, you take too much tablet, now your stomach. No more head. Then they go. Stomach growing big. Oh, it's because of too much medication. That's why you have too much stomach. Now we're going to cut off some. They cut it off, and they start healing. They will start giving another medication. By the time the stomach finished, your leg is aching. By the time it finished, oh, you have kidney and liver solution. Is it a problem? <laughs> so it does not make sense. To a sensible man. Somebody that is sensible, laying hands, does not do what? It makes sense. But that's what God has demanded from us. You shall lay what? Hands. Why hands? Why not head? Why did he say you shall hit your head? <laughs> I be sick. <laughs> he said you are hurt because your heart is an extension. You know why? God spoke and everything came to be. But he made you with what? Hint. So that you can collect the same principle using your hands, not only to slap your children <laughs> or war against your neighbor, but to do what? Lay hands to heal. By faith. Praise God. By faith. Say, so now faith is the assurance. I'm mean, reading from Amplified. Assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for. Being the proof of the things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Conviction. You know, the man of God was saying about conviction. If you are convinced, you don't need people to tell you to shout. You know, we went into a conference one time and we were praying. 
And this point that everybody says he's mad. Everybody will say, I don't like things. Please, don't stay there. People are stoosh. They want to pray in English. I hear them say, speak good English. Amen? Amen. You know, all you know their eyes. You need to be saved, Lord. Yeah. 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 So that the prayer will be heard. Yeah. And this man yeah. was mad. Yeah. Nobody wants to hear it. He was crying. He was throwing himself. He was praying. He was praying. Even me, I give chance. Oh, you know, when you need something desperately, you do something that does not make sense. The whole seat, they pack every seat for him. I mean, hundreds of people, they start packing seats. Some, some strong brothers held him, but they can't hold him. He was crying, crying, picking out everything, praying. And it wasn't long. Everybody in the city, if you want to connect with the governor of that city, you go through him. <laughs> you understand what I said? need to 
sow wheat. But without faith, you cannot sow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Prompted and treated by faith, Abel brought God a better and more acceptable sacrifice than Cain. Because of which it was testified of him that he was righteous, that he was upright and in right standing with God. And God bore witness by accepting and acknowledging his gift. And though he died, Yet, through the incident, he is still speaking. See, so my faith does not die. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why I said, because of faith, Enoch was cut up and transferred to heaven. So that he did not have a glimpse of death and he was not found because God has translated him. For even before he was taken to heaven, he received the testimony still on record that he had pleased and been satisfactory to God. But without faith, the sins, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to God for whoever would come near to God must necessarily Believe that God exists and He is the rewarder of those endlessly and diligently seek Him out. Prompted by faith, Noah being forewarned by God concerning events of which as yet there was no visible sign, took He and diligently and reverently constructed and prepared an ark for the deliverance of His own family. By this, his faith, which relied on God, he passed judgment and sentence on the walls of belief and became an higher and possessor of righteousness. The relation of being right into which God puts the person who has faith. Now, faith does not die. Faith makes no sense. He said, it is impossible. Everybody say impossible. Impossible. I want you to shout it loud. Impossible. Impossible. To please God. To please God. Without faith. You want to please God? You want to sow a good seed? You want to stand before God in righteousness? You need to sow in faith. He said, No, I didn't see any sign. You know, it's, it's always easy when you see a sign. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A sign. The man of God comes to you and says, Hey, by this time next year, you will have a child. But you don't have no, you know that you don't have no womb. You have removed the womb. No sign. So how can you believe that? At least you can try to believe if you have womb. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your sickness is gone. Say, I can say I'm in the headache. There's no sign that this headache is leaving me. The moment he said you are healed, maybe you are still you are having headache. Leg joined it. So there's no sign. But he said it is impossible to please God. Without what? Faith. Without what? Faith. So you need faith. To, to sow a seed, you need faith. Faith is not something that you, you begin to sit down and gather momentum and begin to gather faith. And gather faith. And gather faith. Say, yes, now my faith is full. 
really move. Faith is a spiritual empowerment that gives result according to the desires of the bearer. So you have to you have to be in the kingdom of God first and know the intentions of God. Say the desires of the righteous shall be what? Shall not be disappointed, it shall be met. The 